Josephus, dead man, great drug field, heavy metal, hard rock album from Texas. Some compare them to Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. Really good. Crazy wailing fuzz guitar and crazy cool, loud, glaring vocals. Dead Man on the Hookah label, which was their own private press. Really, really, really good album. Rare to find this original. Um, the band was Dave Mitchell on lead guitar, Ray Turner on bass. They were in a high school band together. And Doug Toll on drums and Pete Bailey on vocals. Unfortunately, just a few days ago, Pete Bailey died. He was still continuing with the torch of the band, playing and performing, and he had some issues and some troubles. Unfortunately, rest in peace, Pete Bailey. I think the band is more known for their heavy buzz guitar and Pete's vocals, screeching, crazy, interesting, cool vocals. The best song on this album, I think, is called Dead Man. They've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have seven tracks, Crazy Man, I Need a Woman, Give Me Shelter is a Rolling Stones cover, Country Boy, Proposition, Side Two is Situation, and Dead Man. They even do a little homage to Beatles with He's So Heavy. The first incarnation of this band lasted a whole year and a half from middle of 1969 to later in September of 1970. They played all over Texas. In October of 1969, they were the opening band for the Grand Funk Railroad Tour in Texas. Bubble Puppy was on that tour and ZZ Top. A year later, they would open for the Grateful Dead, Poco Harem, and 10 years after. But when doing that tour in October, they met um, Jim Musil, a producer who brought them to Phoenix in December. They recorded a handful of tracks. He Then they sent them back. He sent them back to Houston to play in January. He wanted them to change their name to Come, C-O-M-E. He thought he could better market them. And they played a few shows as that, and they didn't hear anything back from Jim, so they canceled the deal with Jim, and they moved on. And then in March of 1970, they got family members together, and they self-financed and started the hookah label. And in March 30th, they recorded back in Phoenix at Audio Recorders and um, they recorded these tracks. They recorded some tracks from the sessions they did in 1969 and then they finished the album in six hours and they pressed 3,000 of these records. Right here it says this record should be played loud. Interesting, on research for this video, there's the sessions from 1969 that um, Jim Musil put together. They were um, reissued in 1993 on the Epilogue label by Neil Skoke. And I know I knew Neil Skoke from Seattle. Uh, I, I went to his house probably 1991 or 1992. He had a basement full of records all over the floor. He had every kind of genre, but he was really into psych and garage. He was especially a big heart collector. He knew all the band members, and he knew them from back in the day. And he was a crazy, crazy fanatic, but also he wrote liner notes for things, and he owned Epilogue Records, which put out different albums. The album he put out was Get Off My Case, and that has since been reissued by Lance at Permanent Records, and you can pick it up pretty cheap. And it's the original 1969 recordings. It's not this, but it's it's still, it's really good. It's really good quality and some really good song. But but Neil, um, I remember I was really into Pink Floyd then. 
and he called me and said that he had a videotape of Pink Floyd performing Apples and Oranges on American Bandstand. And at the time, that wasn't released, and people thought they played CMLE Play, and that, but and not Apples and Oranges, and I didn't believe him. He played an audio clip of it, and I came right over to his house. I think he lives in, you know, he lived in Redmond, and he showed it to me. It had time code, um, so if someone put it out there, people would know who leaked it. But that was the first time I've heard American Bandstand and Apples and Oranges. Um, that's going on a whole, a whole different direction for another video. But Joseph is dead man. Let's see what this book has to say about them. Oh, that reminds me. In September, um, the drummer Doug Tull, December of what is it? Where did I write that? September 14th of 1970, the drummer was arrested for speeding and he was in Austin in jail and he hung himself. And the, he hung himself and died the same day that Jimi Hendrix had his funeral. Um, okay, the Acid Archives. This is page 172. And Josephus, Houston, Texas. We got Dead Man, 1970, Hookah, Dead Man, 1983, and Ava reissue. And then Dead Man, 1991, was re-released on CD. And then on Texman in Germany. And then Sundays did a CD in 1999. And then Arkama did one, 1999. And then another CD in 2004. And another CD in 2009. Dead Man is a professional-sounding outlaw hard rock album. A bit ahead of its time, <clears throat> the rhythm section is solid and the songs have lots of energy. The singer strange for all he's worth, but it sounds pretty genuine. A cover of Gimme Shelter is a waste of four minutes. I kind of agree with you. I don't really like that cover. And the 18-minute 18 18 title song has the expected boring spots. I disagree with that because I love every second of that song. It's It builds. It's a slow build and it just... That's really good. Otherwise, though, this is a good one. The vibe is similar to Jamal, but it sounds a bit more youthful. A brief rip from the Beatles' I Want You, She's So Heavy, in one song is a cool surprise, and Situation is a dynamite hard rock. The Sunday's CD contains an earlier version of the album, which is similar in quality and contains three songs not on Dead Man. The, the earlier December 1969 recordings were also released as a standalone LP, on the epilogue label in 1993 titled Get Off My Case. The three CD dead box features all the recordings plus some live material. And there's a single CD selection of rare material called Dead Man Alive. Here is the label. Oh, this is really hard to get. Again, my album is G plus cover and probably VG minus vinyl, but it plays really good. It plays loud, there's no skips, there's some background noise, but not too much. And I do have the France 1983 Ava reissue. And it does say, no, it says on the label, due to unavailability of certain master recordings, surface noise may be evident on certain tracks. So I guess that is a needle drop. They would eventually do another album on mainstream and I think it came as a white label promo. I have a bootleg of it but I don't have the real one and I know in 1969 their biggest regret was not being signed to international artists, which is the same label that Bubble Puppy and Red Crayola and 13th Floor Elevators were on. Um, I guess someone in the band insulted the label, and so they didn't get on it. And so they were stuck to just play in Texas um, because of that. And if they would have got signed, they probably would have been as big as the elevators. Who knows? Um, but that was like their biggest regret, they said. 
Um, there's some really good interviews online if you want to discover more. There's a, a really good one of Dave Mitchell, the lead guitar player, that talks a lot about the history. Um, Josephus Deadman. Pete Bailey, the lead singer, died a couple of days ago. Rest in peace. Dream this album. Pick it up. Add it to your collection. It's really good. If you have this album in better condition than this, hit me up. I'm looking for an upgrade. Josephus, dead man. Mm-hmm.